Hello, good morning. Good morning. So it is definitely a coffee day. <laughs> Every day is a coffee day. <laughs> but uh, yeah, especially today. I am not awake. Yesterday, I was not awake. Um, I gotta do something about that light up there. Because that light is not nice. <laughs> Tell you what, go ahead and turn that light out. I'm gonna try the the other the, ring light. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna try the ring light. Okay. So we'll see. We'll experiment here. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Go ahead. Whoa! It's dark. Whoa, bright. Nah, turn the other one back on. <laughs> Not enough or too much, both. Yeah, it just it doesn't. Depending on doesn't where it work. is. This one, the issue is the glare. Yeah. And I think a lot of it has to do with the Isn't fact that a that, glare reflector or something? Isn't that what yeah, that's supposed to do? Yeah, but it's not. Well, it's not. Just curious. Hooked correctly for uh, YouTube because for uh -huh. normal, it's right here uh -huh. and I'm further in, mm -hmm. but sitting back here. Mm -hmm. doesn't work so well. Uh, so, uh, I think a lot of it's my hair's white. Can you <laughs> give me one of my hats? Uh, right there. Where am I going? One of the gray hats. The gray hat should be right there. Underneath my scarf. My other scarf. Do you want the, oh. Yeah, that's it. No. Okay, that's better. <laughs> that is, that my, is better. My glowing white hair is the issue, apparently. <laughs> That's so, funny. <laughs> I should have probably worn something that had sleeves because I'm not like cold, cold, but I've had this thing for it was 30 degrees last night. I mean, yeah, I've had this thing for yeah. 16 years and it's finally starting to get holes in it. So, I gotta get a new one. Val got it for me. Our first, first mother, my first Mother's Day. I think that's what it was. Yeah, mother's yeah. Day. he got it for me from the Smithsonian catalog online. So, but. So, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, we have books and we have um, a tarot card pull with a different deck. And we have a new writing deck because it's NaNoWriMo. So <laughs> he actually um, is wearing, by the way, da, da, da. now this is the sticker mule version I tried, but this is actually available in my Etsy shop. So I'll have the link below, but I'm Ren Million everywhere. So if you go to Etsy and pull up Ren Million, the shop, then it'll be in there. But um, I've got a couple of different colors and everything. So, but I like the black shirt. So that turned out pretty I'm wearing. Cool. I'm just wearing it with a black thermal underneath. So yeah, um, so I it's can, a bit chilly. So I can long sleeve it this morning. So, yeah. Yeah. It got down to 28 the other night. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was last night. Yeah. But it was pretty cool. Around that again. Yeah. And it's like about 30. Yeah. Maybe 30 something right now. Mm. Might be 40 something. I don't know. My phone for some reason has not been loading the weather. The weather, weather, weather stuff. Channel. Yeah. Like it's supposed to. So we're going to check. It is 51 right now. Mm -hmm. It's supposed mm -hmm. to get down to 27 tonight. So I'm loving it. I don't know about you guys, but I thrive on cold weather, um, mainly because of my health issues. So this time of year, I go supernova. Mm -hmm. And of course, everybody else is like, I want to hibernate. I want to sleep all the time because my comfy bed is calling me and I don't want to be here. And I'm like, <laughs> let's do this. And East is just like, my daughter's usually like, mom, go away. <laughs> So, um, so some cool stuff. So we have the panda shirt. We have the panda mugs now, um, which I love. I wish they had big ones though. I want like a big coffee mug. Yeah. Just, even <laughs> if it was like it. two ounces larger, mm -hmm. I would be, I'd use it all the time. Yeah. Well, we only use these on Thursday for the podcast. Yeah. Um, we've got a little bit bigger a mug we use the rest of the yeah mug. the mug that's actually um, on here is our larger blue mug that the, we use. yeah but i don't eventually eventually when we get a house i wouldn't mind having the mug wall kind of thing where we have a bunch of different mugs because i 
hope at that point people will send us different kinds of mugs and fun and odd stuff and you know it'd be fun but uh the uh the theme this month pretty much is writing i've been writing like crazy so writing in books i know you want to talk about your books wait which one I mean, I just have them available. Okay. Um, but I do a Wordy Wednesday stream on Twitch on Wednesday mornings. And I picked up this, which is the Writing Down the Bones deck, which is Natalie Goldberg, who wrote Writing Down the Bones 35 years ago, something wow, like it's that. Been that. It's been that long, yeah. Oh um, and I was talking on stream yesterday about the fact that she does have an audiobook for writing down the bones. She's very monotone. So I can't do the auto audiobook. Um, I prefer the paperback version of the book. And they also have a Shambhala because this is Shambhala press that puts out the deck, but they also have a smaller pocket size book version mm -hmm of it that I absolutely adore that mine has gone a wall. I need to get another one, but, um, this deck has prompts in it. Da, da, da. So this first one I did on live stream yesterday and it's begin with, I'm thinking of, and every time you get stuck, simply come back to, again to I'm thinking of and keep going. This is a classic, one I've used at least a thousand and ten times. It seems to flush out the mind, clean the corners. Not complicated. It's an entry point. So I like really simple topics. Um, she doesn't like using the word prompts. Um, and she goes into why... And call a spade a spade. Uh, yeah, and she's like, I've always used the word topic instead of prompt. Prompt is a starting place, but topic indicates the the I, more the idea of plunging in and immersion. Which, when I think of like my old English composition classes in high school, though, you know, the English instructors were always like emphasizing, you know. What's your main topic? You need a thesis. You need mm -hmm. this and that, and these are your descriptors. So referring to it as this is what the subject is mm -hmm. actually makes a lot of sense. Um, at least to me, because, you know, I had like college prep English professors that were always like, you have to have a topic and a, and a thesis statement. Or, yeah. uh, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, I like the deeper dive idea. I like the, mm -hmm. the immersion. And this, especially this time of year, um, even Isa has been, you know, wanting to dig in a little deeper. And it's not even so much that, you know, this is like witchy season, you know, with Halloween and then Yule and you've got, you know, all this holiday stuff and everything. But for me, it's the cold weather triggers it. And I go supernova because with the lymphedema, I cannot do heat. And, you know, summer just drags me down. I'm usually avoiding outside. Um, that's when I go crazy with the plants because I can have the plants inside because I can't go outside and see them. Um, and I like having more green in the house anyway. But it's cold weather just it's an introspection time it's a the deep work because it's the days are longer it feels darker although you go outside if it's snowing and you're blind <laughs> this is my mom's big complaint is having to wear sunglasses to go outside during the day when it's snowing because everything is just the stark bright in your face kind of you know yeah. white yeah um but I think this is when I, I dig a little deeper with my writing um, this time of year. And I don't, it could be a habit, you know, brought on by doing nano since 2006 on and off. Um, I've done it or attempted it probably every year since then. Mm -hmm. There's been a couple of years where I was just like, nope, my brain is not wrapping around this right now. Um, but I do have the, 
um, from here to their book coming out. Um, hopefully here in the next week, I'm finishing that up. I've got the, the cover for it done. Um, have all the other stuff that I wanted to do with it done. There's going to be a deck, which I hadn't talked to you about yet. Mm -hmm. Cause that was just kind of a, an afterthought that I've been toying with, but there's going to be a, a deck for that. Um, and I will probably Kickstarter that, but the big thing is um, with the Kickstarter is going to be Stegs and Serato, finally, because um, I have the the little deck 90% done because I had to shift all the images. And I ended up, unfortunately, having to redraw most of it because of the fact oh, that I yeah. lost yeah, all my stuff on Procreate. Reset. Yeah, the... I had to do a reset. factory. Yeah, I had to do a factory reset on my iPad because it stopped offloading stuff, and I'm getting to the point where I'm half on my storage again. So I've got to start. Boy. Yeah. Well, the the new Procreate update has 3D, and even though I don't have any 3D files or anything yet, it's still, you know, it's like 11 gigs now. I think. Yeah. Well, it would require whatever it requires yeah. to be able to operate its own system mm -hmm. on top of anything that you store. That makes sense. Yeah. So it's yeah, like the whole, the whole thing's like 11 gigs now and I haven't even done any of the 3D stuff yet, mm -hmm. which I probably, I don't know if I will or not. Issa and I are both excited about it because we can, if we can 3D model our characters, mm -hmm. we can send that off to somebody that knows how to do SDL files. Mm -hmm. So 3D print them. Yeah. yeah. So 3D printed. Yeah characters from my children's books might be a thing or any, Especially of, or any of those funny. awesome figures that Issa has been drawing in the last oh like two gosh. years yeah any any of them yeah so i've got this little guy that's gonna be a plush kit here on spoonflower soon but this is my little moon rabbit from I don't know why I'm holding it up to the mic. <laughs> My little moon rabbit from Clementine's Garden. I did a paper mock-up. But I have the cloth one that I'm going to be um, sewing and making into a plush. And his little arms and legs aren't going to have any stuffing in him. Neither are his ears. I might have another layer inside just to add some weight to it. But the body itself will be stuffed. So he's going to be another... He's going to be another bunny for my Twitch channel points. So, because we have all the jelly cat bunnies. Whoa. <laughs> we have all the jelly cat bunnies. So, this one I decided to keep out here this morning. <laughs> the big one is in the bedroom. Um, the big one is, we need another chair for, for mm -hmm. him. We don't have enough space back here. So, <laughs> we're in the corner of my kitchen. But, um... So yeah, so the writing the writing has become a thing, and my goal's seventeen hundred words a day. When he does it, he sets it at thirty five hundred words a day, thirty seven hundred words a day, because mm -hmm. maniac. Um, <laughs> but he's written three novels that are ninety to a hundred thousand words, um, oh, was... and you double your word count usually for a nano because nano is supposed yeah, to be yeah daily word count fifty thousand. Yeah. Mm -hmm goal and he usually sets his at a hundred thousand but you're not doing it this year i know mm -hmm. no <laughs> and he's still kind of stiff he's still working on the the neck thing so we're next time you see him he's gonna he's gonna be a little more manicured <laughs> i threw a ray i threw his older razor away so he's got to i'm gonna help him trim up today the so next time you see him it'll a little less lumberjack <laughs> yeah, okay. But because <laughs> right now you look like a Muppet. <laughs> yeah, I know. But we like Muppets around here, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about your books. Have your have your coffee and then tell me about your books. Okay, so I've got two sci-fi books today to recommend. Uh, I've got one by Arthur C. Clarke, which is a quick read. This is Earthlight. Um, this is uh, what happens when minerals are found on the moon. 
and the factions uh, that are on their way to claim it and the operative slash agent who's assigned to figure out what the political uh, uh, is going on uh, as far as the, the groups that are involved. Uh, it's a short read. It's if there's probably barely 150 pages there. Uh, it's quick. Um, the other one today is one I started reading. It's um, at least part of a two book series, possibly longer, um, and is space opera. This is uh, Pandora's Star by uh, Peter F. Hamilton. Um, so far, I'm enjoying it. I've read about 110 pages or so of this and i'm enjoying it so far uh, i like the technology in it so far and um it's well clean thus far i don't know um, most of his writing is relatively safe i think mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if, we're, did some, if we're talking about age groups mm -hmm. uh i haven't come across anything at least that is counter to that so yeah. um but it's it does have that kind of Star Wars feel, you know. You've got gates that travel through space that, you know, are uh, like wormholes, things like that. So there's some cool stuff there, mm -hmm. and um, so, and that's um, the other one. The second one in that series is um, um, Hades Unchained, I believe, is the name of the second mm -hmm. book in that series. So, so I'm looking at so this was. <laughs> Yeah, so I saw that. So, copyright's 1955. Mm -hmm. um, this is a second Valentine, Balhai printing, June 1966. Because mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm looking at the font, and definitely, you know, that top part back there, that is definitely 60. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it says, to Val, who massacred the second draft, and Bernie, who slaughtered the third. I love it. Mm -hmm. So, I might actually... <laughs> Two editors. Yeah. Yeah. I mm -hmm. might actually um the font. See, I when I'm doing books, like I can tell it's a reprint because they've got the the they spacing's weren't they weren't off. as careful. Yeah, the spacing's off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they weren't as careful and the margins are always really, really tight and the font is insanely small. Um so that's one thing about my books is I try to keep the, I don't do large print, but I keep it readable mm -hmm. um, as far as the size. And I always make my margins probably bigger than I need to, mm -hmm. just because I like the look of having more space and having it a little more organized. Um, so from a design aspect, <laughs> I used to be paperback manager for uh, Books A Million eons ago. And that was one of the things that I noticed you know from the the prints the reprints and that kind of thing dollar 25 classic so let's see <laughs> the, the price the other the nice thing about there. a lot of those older but books too is you can usually pick them up used short... for usually pick them up used for under four bucks most yeah. of the time and i want to go back to georgia and i was right that that's one... 155 pages yeah so <laughs> i want to go back to that one bookstore in georgia mm-hmm after we get things kind of sussed out with bookshelves and everything, because we're putting yeah. bookshelves together uh, tomorrow. Um, I am stealing my daughter's partner, Josh, and we're putting bookshelves together in the living room. So um, getting, doing the, the nesting for the holidays thing and rearranging and doing all that. Cause I want to have a, thinking I want to have a regular size tree this year because we've had a little one that we nicknamed Wilson because it's a Wilson mm -hmm. that's actually the name of the brand, not this... the brand, but it's like a Wilson model number kind of thing for, for yeah, the I tree. Know, I but don't it's know a that short that's the company foot. name, but yeah. It's... Yeah, it's a short, now it's like Better Homes and Gardens or some whatever. We picked it up cheap the one year. We didn't have room for a big tree. I don't think yeah. we've had a big tree here, have we? No. We never we have had, room for it. Because we had, well, we had the smaller apartment, so we had, I thought we had the first year. No. I don't think so. In front of the window, but maybe not. Uh -huh. No. Okay. 
I had it over I, by where you have the printer. We've had one on the coffee table sitting yeah, there. Yeah, and we have one in the corner. And one in the corner back yeah, there. And then yeah. we had the yeah the coffee table I liked the best because it was right in the middle of the room. Mm -hmm. And we had all the presents around it. And how, actually, we had all the food around it. All the presents were over on the other thing. Because my daughter goes supernova when she bakes and cooks. And this year will be no different. Especially because this is technically their first Christmas together. Yeah. Um, last year was their first Christmas together. But because of pandemic crap, we weren't able to celebrate together. Um, and that was right before we got sick in February. So, um, we didn't really do a whole lot decoration wise last year. So I want to do it right this year. Cause I'll have the mantle with the fireplace cause we're moving the TV off of it. Um, we've already switched it to the other side of the room. And so I'm going to have my actual mantle. So we're going to have, I got to get, um, stocking hangers mm -hmm. we have to get four this year because mm -hmm. of Josh. So, and then another extra one or whatever for for Logan and mom kind of thing. Because they'll come over and get stockings Christmas Day. But we'll have a fourth person Christmas morning for stockings. So it'll be fun. So I'm looking forward to it. But he's just got to do something other than dark chocolate peppermint. Because he doesn't do peppermint. So we got to figure out a different kind of fudge this year. I'm voting for Panuche. Which is like a brown sugar maple fudge or whatever is my favorite. I found somebody on Amazon that had it that wasn't too bad, but there's somebody locally that makes it that just never, because hmm. they're, I think their Richmond store carries it, but the one here doesn't. But they don't make it on a regular basis. We had a place called Kilwins down in Florida um, that I don't know if they're strictly Florida. I think, no, I think it's a, I think it's a franchise. I thought it was a franchise. I've seen, I know I know of them in other states. So thought we had one in Arizona. So yeah, they're not like exclusive. Oh, they're all over. Yeah, okay. they're not exclusive. Except to, for Kentucky, the closest one that looks like in Tennessee. Northern Tennessee. Yeah. In Franklin, Tennessee. Franklin. Oh. Yeah. Really? Okay. Well, Franklin, North Carolina is where we went. Yeah. Well, meeting. I was going to say we've been to Franklin, Tennessee. Mhm. Mm so, yeah. So, okay. So that's the the closest. It's about four hours, yeah. three and a half. Um, there might actually be four, one. Yeah, four hours. Yeah, Columbus is the next one. Ohio. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Because huh. I think we're too far over. No, there's one in Knoxville. That's two hours from here. Because Bria is two hours north of Knoxville. Uh -huh. So. Ooh. Not that I want to drive two hours to go get fudge, but I do it. I'm crazy uh -huh. like that. Not to mention it's, you know, before the snow sets in, I would love to take a drive, like an actual drive and go do something. So for some reason, I thought they had one in Arizona. Nope. Colorado is the furthest out that way. Florida, they're all over. Yeah. Um, Chicago looks like it's got like Five of them. Five of them. Michigan's covered them. So apparently it was something that started in Michigan. But Kilwins had um, chocolate-covered bananas. Mm -hmm. Fudge. They had the orange peel candy that was covered in chocolate, which orange and chocolate, if you haven't had, is an amazing. Um, the... I keep wanting to say stroop waffle. The uh, Belgian, or not Belgian, the um, waffle cones. Yeah, That's just, all you could smell waffle. when you walk in. Yeah, just the waffle Because they served cones. ice cream too, but that was all you could smell <laughs> when you walked in was the <laughs> waffle cones because they made them there. And which, like if we do, when we do Pizzelli's this year, mm -hmm. we can te technically, we've got the thing for it, we can technically make, um, yeah, we have the, the rollers. We have a roller. But... And cannoli out of it. Mm -hmm. We haven't tried cannoli. I think we should try cannoli this year. we got to have the filling right first. Yeah. If the filling's not Mr. right. Mr. Alchemist. 
No, I'm my just, kitchen I'm alchemist. Just, he can, I'm just he saying can, I've never made. Yeah, but if anybody can figure it out, it'll be you. I've, I've never made the filling before, you and he said. so yeah. And if the filling's not right, then it doesn't matter whether the waffle's correct or not. It's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So now here's here's the thing: Do you like the little chocolate chips in your cannoli, or do you not? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know if that was a standard. Powdered sugar. I didn't know if the, chocolate chips. Yeah. I didn't know if that was a standard thing for cannoli or. If um, was... every one I've ever had had chocolate chips in it. Yeah. But you know, unless it was something specialized. So. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you've made the. Most chocolate. of them get coating coated of power powdered sugar over the top yeah. too. Yeah. For the Pizzellis, I know you've done chocolate. Oh. Um, chocolate rum. Mm -hmm. Rum regular. I think we did five spice. It was dark. It was dark chocolate have... and imitation rum extract. Yeah, that's what that was. And we didn't have, um, we didn't have, not cinnamon. What's the spice we didn't have the one year that goes in it? We ended up using five spice instead, and then it turned out really good. Mm. Was it all spice or what's the? I know you've got no. A I I never make them unless anise. I have I anise. Never, that's what it was. We I didn't never have make it. them unless I have anise. No, we did the five spice one year. They were really good because that was the year we made them for um, Kathy and Dawn. So we had a friend of ours that bought an entire flat <laughs> for forty bucks of like an entire batch of Pizzelles, and we've got the the one Pizzelli maker, but I actually want to do the little ones. I want to get another Pizzelli maker that does, there's one that does four little ones instead of two big ones. I mean, you can make them smaller, but you'd have to use less batter and at guess, a time, yeah. which you can just get a melon baller for something that size, probably. Yeah. Cause you've got the, the one ice cream scoop thing that yeah, actually works perfect bigger. for it, yeah. but he's got it down to a, an absolute science, but I want to make cookies this year, especially with Josh. Down to the timer Josh is a, Josh is a cookie boy. <laughs> Down to the timer length. Yeah. So, yeah. so I think we're going to be doing some baking and some family stuff this year, too. Plus, Logan's got his new house, so we'll be taking baked goods over and doing stuff over there, too, I'm sure. But I don't know. I'm looking forward to, despite everything else that's going on, and I think a lot of people are too, is just something about this Christmas seems more special. And I think a lot of us are looking forward to it because I've heard a, I've heard a lot of people talking about, you know, the holidays coming up and it just seems it's more upbeat this year than it has in the past has been in the past so but um so i'm going to do a card pull here in a second but this is this was our halloween was the uninvited the ghost movie ghost story and it's um 1944 black and white uh, you can only get this on the Criterion collection now, but I found it on Amazon and had to snag it. And uh, there's a couple of different things in here that I haven't looked at yet. There's like a booklet that's got an essay in it. And there's also two radio ab adaptations, 1944 and 1949. Both are have Ray Milland doing it, which is awesome because he actually narrates the, the front side of mm -hmm. the beginning of this. Um but so we got to watch this on wasn't Halloween it say itself because I was doing the twelve hour stream. It was a it's couple a few days before. Yeah, it was a few days before. So that was our, was our theme. So but the deck for today, this is actually the mini version of the one that I backed on Kickstarter, which I have that one too. Um this is the Roots and Wings Oracle deck. And I absolutely adore the artwork and have since been in conversations with um, the artist who I believe is in the UK. Um, but I love how they have the spreads on a card instead of in the book. But the artwork for, for this deck is really beautiful. 
and it's very watercolory. Um, of course, the moon card. It's one of my favorites. But, it's like cheese. <laughs> but um, and manifestations, a bunny. So we're going to pull a card for today. <laughs> well, it's better than fertility. Um, it's like, I ain't going to have none of that around here. Thank you so much. Unless it's fertile projects. <laughs> I don't need fertile people around here. Plants. Plants. <laughs> you get the bunny. <laughs> so we're going to pull a card because we can. So, But I have a deck collection, so we're going to do a different deck each, each time just for giggles. And I use these as, I've used these as writing cues. I've used these as, um, there's actually a couple of books out there where you can use tarot decks for um, character creation. So you can create your own um, characters for stories. Um, I Oh, speaking of. Yeah. The uh, guy on Etsy that I bought that deck from. Uh-huh. It wasn't a tarot card deck. It was a um, it was a group of cards with his artwork on them, and oh, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just used for assembling a plot or assembling mm -hmm. writing aspects for you to put There's a, a lot story of together. Plot uh, his deck. shop is called Shadow Myths, mm -hmm. and his name is Doug Hops, and. Very dark art. Very, yeah, it's it's really dark art, but um, some of that is good if you want an antagonist in your story, though. So that's you know, mm -hmm. which in a lot, you know, tabletop games you probably do. So you know, something happens and you have to go figure out what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So today's is Perseverance. Ooh. So we have Perseverance. Let me get my zoom in here a little better so you guys can see this. There you go. Perseverance. Which that is appropriate because I'm needing some of that for... Some stuff I'm working on. So, and they have their, instead of a book, they have their stuff on a card, which I really like this. Perseverance, the will and ability to keep going even in the face of obstacles. So if you're working on anything this week, projects or yourself, or you're going through anything, perseverance is your, perseverance is your card. So totally on board with that. <laughs> kind of appropriate. Yeah. I have like no classes right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's been really slow. With I have like teaching. twenty-six class listings right now. I have like <laughs> Yes. Yeah, like, well we've done I don't know that you're so. saturating the market yet because you only, you only teach the one class. Like Sixteen hundred saves my in my class, but class only, I've only taught too. like four hundred and sixty students. Mm -hmm. So, I, I... and you've actually been teaching longer than me, but I offer a wider array of classes. Yeah, and mine are anywhere from one one session to two sessions. To well, four. I signed up, and then I didn't have a student till three or almost three or four months after I signed up and had my interview process because I think my first class was in September. Yeah. Actually. So. And I don't yeah. think I started until. When did I start? I started teaching. Two thousand nineteen. Hmm. Mm hmm. January. Okay. Yeah. About four months was, later. Yeah, because that was the first, and there was. <clears throat> um, see, that's what I don't get. Is 
That must have been the next, the following month. Their payout system is weird. Like I had three learners there, but no payout. So, <laughs> so I need to go back through some of the stuff. Um, but it's, I've enjoyed, uh, really, really enjoyed teaching online and it saved us last year with COVID, um, big time. So it's definitely, it's been a blessing and I love being able to continue to do what I do. Um, I'm going to start offering adult classes. I've been saying that for a while, but I'm actually getting ready to launch um, some Christmas or Yule related classes for crafting and making stuff that I'm going to have going on starting next week is what I'm looking at um, that will be on Zoom. So I will have, um, if you follow me on any social media, I will be spamming it on like Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. So I will have class listings up for that. Um, and I'm trying to put together a kit that can be pre-ordered because that way I can have all the supplies sent out and, um, or even just, you know, recommendations and printouts and that kind of thing. Um, I'm also wanting to do some more stuff with our local maker space here too in Berea, but with COVID it's a little, it makes me, it still makes me a little antsy being around a lot of people. Um, like right now I would love to be doing book signings, but the idea of being in a crowded bookstore still kind of, I don't know, I'm starting because it's a bookstore. It's I'm almost willing to chance it, but I still get nervous. I know we've been talking about like, I really want to go to Barnes. I really want to go to half price books or I really want to do stuff. But you know, I mean, if people are distanced or they're limiting, you know, people, I don't know, but I know in the UK right now, the Delta virus is going off the chain. We've got a lot of friends in the UK that I've been kind of concerned about. So, um, but, uh, so weird web or cool web, um, speaking of world, other parts of the world around the world in 80 days is apparently going to launch, mm. um, on Masterpiece in January and David Tennant is doing it. So I'm ecstatic um, because I love David Tennant. So I'll put the link right here. And we'll link this in the comments section down below too but uh so i'm looking forward to that um and i love absolutely love jules verne so um journey to the center of the earth is my yeah. favorite I, yeah. I love the, the the book not so much any like film adaptation mm -hmm. that they've done i like the, the, the novel better the, the novel usually. was really good yeah as a rule <laughs> but jules verne and hg wells um, are big for me. Um, speaking of steampunk, Sophia is doing a steampunk event this weekend. That's the other thing I, I really like about today's sci-fi recommendation too. The, the space travel is plausible space travel mm -hmm. the stuff that we're probably capable of doing now. It isn't faster than light. It's, you know, slingshotting a ship off of, you know, the gravity of, an, of a planet, things like that, instead of um, things like what you would see in Star Wars or Star Trek, where the ship's faster than a certain speed and just takes off, you know, so mm -hmm. um, people go into, you know, cryo sleep, they sleep for long periods of time, they get there and then they're awoken by whether it be the computer or one of the people who's awake monitoring it or whatever, or, or even a a, an, an android or a droid or something like that so you know <laughs> yeah they aren't like awake for the whole trip and now they're 300 years old although they do go through cycles of sleep mm -hmm. 
you know, where, you know, they'll have uh, rejuvenation processes. <laughs> yeah. I like the plausible. Like I that. like more plausible writing. Things like that. Like with me, you and I both, um, we write as much in reality as we can and then kind of push it off the cliff a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we hook you in with that kind of stuff. But two of my favorite also, good morning, Jack. Hi. Sorry, what? Why sorry? You're here. It's cool. I know it's early for you, so don't worry about it. Good to see you. So, yeah, David Tennant, January on Masterpiece, 80, around the world in 80 days. Mm -hmm. And I'm a sucker for a good hot air balloon. I spelt Val wrong. Oh, you're fine. I don't hold anybody to typos anymore. It's okay. When I was a kid, I used to write my name, Vla. <laughs> <laughs> my dad saw it once don't on tell me that i'm gonna be calling you blah hey blah hey blah my dad saw it on my blah. homework once when i was in like maybe second or third grade and he just he's like hey blah he started calling me blah when i was a kid <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so i'm trying to remember because i actually couldn't remember his name Eddie Redmayne. So Eddie Redmayne was in a hot air balloon movie. And I can't think of the name of it. That was amazing. Um, he was in the Danish girl, which was also really, really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Aeronauts 2019. Absolutely. Yeah. Aeronauts. Loved yeah. that movie. Um, and he did a really good job of it. And it's actually based on a, a true story. So that is another recommendation. Um, if you get a chance to, to watch it, it's a hot air balloon story. Um, and the other new thing this week too, back to writing. Um, yeah, I know. I love that movie. Um, Scrivener 3 for Windows finally came out. So I've updated my software and I love it um, because I had purchased after November 2017, mm -hmm. the first one. It took them a few years to get it out. Um, the second, the first one was Windows and then Scrivener 2, they actually released for Mac. Yeah, they brought the Mac out first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing different versions with that. They just kept going with the third version. So Scrivener 3 is for Windows, and it's... Um, I like a lot of the bells and whistles. It's a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. um, it still has a couple things for me for formatting, but I'm looking forward to learning more about it. Um, yeah, it's... I can... If I put it on the iPad, which I tend not to do stuff like that on mobile, because it's too much of a possibility of me actually deleting something. Um, mobile doesn't with that kind of stuff doesn't work as well. The final draft um, software for mobile doesn't work too bad, but I prefer having, you know, if I'm going to work on a computer, I want the desktop. I want the full, the full on thing. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm not going to buy the, the iPad version um, there's a way I can view it without it, you know, as a PDF, that kind of thing, if I need to, and I can scroll through stuff, but I'm usually a in print edit girl. I like having a printed copy that I can just red pen the heck out of. Um, so anything editing wise, I'll be printing out doing the red pen and then going back into the, the digital. Um, and I do all my book formatting in InDesign. So with um, Scrivener 3, though, I'm really liking some of the new changes. Um, you can export to ebook, but like I said, I'd rather do it in InDesign because I have more control. Um, but the 
there's some bells and whistles in there that are really cool, including a dark mode and a turn everything off kind of thing setting, um, which I have another app for my computer that literally will turn off all social, turn off everything. And all you have is the screen, you know, in front of you and I've got my typewriter keyboard, so I'm good to go. Um, but a lot of what I'm doing for Nano this year, I'm actually doing in a cheap spiral notebook with a ballpoint pen because mm -hmm. I love handwriting stuff. It's just when I get too fast, then I'll move to the computer. So, but and I don't think I mentioned it. Seattle's best breakfast blend is what we're doing mm -hmm. today. So we're starting to, to get to the point mm -hmm. where we need different mm -hmm. kinds of coffee. And I really, I want to get that Keurig. But at the same time, it's like buying four different coffees in a month is like, yeah, well, we don't even drink that much coffee. And it's like, <laughs> we drink that much coffee. We drink no, at least a there's pot, still sometimes two, two there's pots still a day. a whole bag between two different coffees up there that we haven't gone through Yeah, that were featured like two or three weeks ago. <laughs> so, yeah. So I make one see. pot in the morning and sometimes a pot in the evening, yeah. maybe three or four days a week. And usually. it's a small, it's not a big, huge so, pot. It's a small one. Yeah. It's the five, the five carafe, not the big 10 carafe. Like you get on a regular size, Mr. Coffee. Yeah, so. This is what's on my radar now. Although I would like to get the one that Julia has, but it's like 250 bucks, yeah. but it's uses any kind of K cup, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, um, but they have a recycling program. Keurig has a recycling thing now, or all their stuff is recyclable, but it's yeah. the other company has, they give you a bag that's already postage paid that you dump all your stuff in there. Um, and so this one, I saw at Kroger and I really want to get it. And it's a blue, it's my favorite blue like the vintage blue, but it's like 80 bucks and it's a K mini Keurig and it uses all the, the Keurig stuff, but even better, which those are recyclable. Now they learned their lesson. Um, but it probably had a bunch of people. The amount of stuff in the landfills was bad. It was yeah. really bad. It was really horrible because everybody was like on board with the whole, oh, we can do K cups now. And then they were filling the landfills and they're like, oh, <laughs> we didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, but they're recyclable now. But I actually, there's an insert that you can get if you use a machine that's a K cup machine. You can get, um, or any of the, the ones that have the pods, is you can get a piece that's either silicon or um, stainless that you can put your own coffee in. So we can buy different brands or like mm -hmm. we make a trip to when we go to jungle gyms, the YouTube live will probably be a little later in the day or we'll have a supplement to it. And we're going to go to the coffee aisle or coffee section at Jungle Gyms. Because Jungle Gyms is at like least, the size at least, of Disney. At least half the, <laughs> half the, almost, at least half the aisle is all coffee. No, and it's, there's like a whole section. Well, that's what I mean. Like yeah. the whole wall is yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, all it's coffee. A whole huge section because they have different, um, it's all divided by country or by category. So mm -hmm. coffee is a whole section. Candy is an entire world. Um, every possible country you can think of. I'd be interested to see if they have the stuff that Sandra sent as far as the chocolate. They yeah, probably from, do. Yeah. From, from Sweden. Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I might have to get her to send me another box by Christmas <laughs> for Christmas for us for stockings. Um, Cause we always have some kind of, candy usually the lint uh linder balls the chocolate because they have so many different flavors out now mm -hmm. but we need to figure out what kind of stuff josh likes so we can do stocking stuff for josh this year but um but yeah the uh keurig machines got the recycled k-cups now and i'd like to be able to 
that way I can try different brands because you can get assortment packs. Mm -hmm. But then there's also, I found a couple of loot crates online that actually have, um, there's one of them that actually comes with LPs, which is cool. Because we have record players, uh, loot crate. Is yeah, there's one called Turntable. Oh, that is curated coffee and vinyl. Oh, that's neat. Yeah, um, and then there's the other one had. Had a Green Day LP in it, so maybe if I put Green Day. Separate words. Oakland. Oakland Coffee? Yeah, Oakland Coffee Works has. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and I'll go. link those in the bottom, but it's the, the 1994 BBC Sessions vinyl. Um, so for 20 bucks, you get. Uh, the seven inch vinyl plus I think three bags of coffee. Um, I want to say there's like three pounds of coffee. It comes with it. And it looks like one of the guys from green day. <laughs> that looks like <laughs> that looks like the lead singer from green day. I'm wondering now. Is that what he's doing now? Yeah. Mate and Trey of green day. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's, I think they started a coffee company. <laughs> well, now <laughs> that they're perfect. not, you know, touring regularly and everything, probably yeah. that's probably a viable thing yeah. for them to be doing. That's great. You've wow. been to the factory there for lint candy. Oh, I'm so jealous. We've been oh to Celestial gosh. Seasonings in, yeah. uh, in uh, Colorado Springs, yeah. but in Boulder, tea, Boulder, but... actually. The, um, yeah. yeah, we found what we didn't know is we found out the Celestial Seasonings has one factory, just one in the entire world. And it's in Boulder, Colorado. And I'm thinking, man, the insurance on that place and the security protocols, because, you know, something happens to that building. No more Celestial Seasonings <laughs> for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but we did the, the tour for that one, and that was a lot of fun. But I would love to tour the Lint, the Lint Factory, Connecticut, right? And they have actual retail locations, which is cool too. Yeah, they look like they're all in. Yeah, that one's. Clinton Crossing. I want to do the tour there. <laughs> I want to do the... Oh my gosh. I'm looking at the storefront picture. All the things. <laughs> my eyes just glazed over. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> they got a bunch of stuff for Christmas now too. Out. It looks cute. But um, my favorite... What's your favorite flavor, Drac? For the lint stuff. What's your favorite favorite flavor? I think I can probably guess yours. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. The dark talk that really that really or dark. Peanut butter, yeah. Yeah. The um my favorite is the limoncello. They have one uh if you can find it in the spring that they come out with that is amazing it's a citrus one they call it citrus but it's limoncello and it's so good yeah the dark chocolate he likes that one too mm -hmm. the really really i've never been a real big dark chocolate fan some things like milky way dark i like um but the super super dark chocolate is a little too bitter for me mm -hmm. i think um my mom loves dark chocolate though so and we actually need to find some i want to see if i can find some like dark chocolate macadamia nuts or something because she's mm. 
she used to get the Mauna Loa macadamia nuts, and I know she hasn't bought any for herself in a really long time. So, but, so we have our Christmas, Christmas ideas coming up, um, cause it's coming back. I still can't believe it's November. It's coming up way fast. Um, this whole year is just breezed by completely. Um, but yeah, we want to try some new coffees, some new teas. Um, we did one, I saved it. Isa tried it. She didn't like it because she's not a tea person, but she tried it at least. But uh, she had done this one the other night. It was the organic berry berry, which is strawberry, raspberry, rose hips, rubios, and hibiscus. And it's really good. But it tastes like a melted Jolly Rancher to me. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. So, but, uh, hmm. but yeah, it's tea and soups and coffee and all the warming cozy cozy stuff doing huga designs and decorations and stuff for christmas right now um working on christmas cards trying to figure out what our christmas cards are going to look like this year i'm not even sure what i want to do mm -hmm. um i made a santa one but i don't know that i'm necessarily going to stick stick to that one that will probably be something I put in the shop um, this week but so I have this guy that I did I'm probably gonna change his eyebrows because he looks a little too a little too stern but I was playing around with it um, that one in particular is just kind of doodling but we'll see I don't know. Usually we'll do like an owl, a fox, and a mm -hmm. bunny. Might be a might be a panda bunny and a fox this year, and then we have to add in Josh. We need to figure what Josh is. <laughs> I forget what I did him as in one of the other things, but she always he always draws draws chibi Josh, which is really cute. Mm -hmm. So. But January is going to be the launch of some stuff with Isa and I. Um, and so I'm looking forward to that. We're making big plans. This month is all Christmas stuff. So December is kind of chill, collaborate, work on launches. Mm -hmm. um, I have a bunch of books to get out before the end of the year because I have a friend of mine that challenged me to get some submissions in for the Imagine Awards for Imaginarium next year, which I'm hoping we can attend live. That's going to be in July. So that will be the first convention we actually get to go back to. And of any of them, I'd love to do that one yeah. the most. Two Lex years almost. Yeah. Almost two years. Yeah. Lexington, uh, LexCon won't be until... October. I was going to say at least six months in. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember it being until at least at least July. Usually. It's usually it's hot outside. It. Yeah. <laughs> March. Wow. They're doing it in March. Really? Yeah. And they're already selling tickets for it. My goodness. So I'm going to contact them. Um. Heh. <laughs> Christopher Savat, isn't he the guy that's do, that does Ayame in Fruits Basket? I don't know. Does he do... He does the I voices does. of um, yeah. Dragon Ball Z characters and I wanna a say bunch of done, other stuff. Yeah, I want to say he's done a bunch of stuff that's... Um, I want to say he's Ayame for that. So that should be interesting. But they have... Uh, A huge, they have like the new convention center and it's huge and it was already huge before that so it's gonna be interesting so i have to contact them because i know the owner so i have to contact them and see if we can get the brown coats hmm. in there slash run million because i always have my stuff in there too but um i've got the dis table display stuff ready i just have to order it and so we'll see 
but I've got it down to a science anytime we do cons to um, for pack. Up. It's like 15 minute pack up setup for the whole thing. And I've got the cart and all that for it. So, but so just chatting today is kind of a chill day. Um, I hope you guys have the, have a great rest of your week and weekend and stay warm, stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands. <laughs> um, you know, just be kind to each other. And uh, my next stream is going to be on Twitch Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time. So I'm going to be doing some art mm -hmm. for possibly, I'm really, really thinking about doing digital admin stuff. Mm -hmm. So, okay. but it's Christmas stuff. So I might do some of the, actually I might do some of the everyday downloads because everybody voted that we're going to do Christmas like in the first part of it and then like decorations and ornaments and that kind of thing. And then they wanted everyday stuff that they could use all year round. So I'm going to work on um, some stuff for that. So I think, but take care, Drag. It was good to see you. Mwah. And we will see you guys again next week. Take care.